from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English. This is our fifth program, Episode 5, Segment 1. Ramping Up Your English is for English learners from all language backgrounds who have already begun the process of learning English as their second language. It's a program for people of all ages. If you're seeking greater English proficiency, this program is designed to help you reach that goal. We have two objectives today. We'll learn to use conjunctions to communicate a cause and effect relationship and we'll review the main rules for making contractions out of two words. Episodes three and four took us to the past to ramp our way up in relating past events. Today's episode also looks at past events, but this time the objective is to show the relationship between cause and effect. Our history content today is the role of railroad workers in forming some of our first labor unions. Here's a short video clip about that. Railroads spread across America once the Transcontinental Railroad was completed in 1869. Already established in the Northeast by 1850, they grew at a fast rate once the track spread out from coast to coast. Union Pacific, Southern Pacific, Northern Pacific, and later Great Northern joined their eastern counterparts in moving freight and people. Bigger and more powerful steam engines seemed to rule the rails but it was people who kept these trains running. At one time, railroads and supporting industries employed the greatest number of workforce members in the United States. In the age of robber barons, the railroad business was an especially cutthroat competition. Fierce competitors, railroad companies were constantly running each other out of business. Bankruptcy and mergers have always been part of the business, continuing to this day. When the railroads needed people, they paid good wages. But when there was a downturn in business, they were quick to lower those wages. Employees of separate railroads were powerless to do anything about it. And it wasn't just wages. Railroads were dangerous places to work. Money-hungry owners were often more interested in profit than safety and many railroad workers were killed or maimed on the job. So workers on the hundreds of U.S. railroads formed unions to protect their rights and force employers to improve conditions. Railroads resisted the unions and the reforms they demanded. Workers organizing unions were often fired and blackballed, meaning that competing railroads wouldn't hire them either. The oldest railroad union is the Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineers and Trainmen. It represented workers in the many jobs required to make a railroad run. The formation of unions did not bring about immediate improvements. Workers continued doing dangerous work and the railroads continued demanding more and more of their workers, moving at a faster and faster pace to improve their profits. Railroads and their workers' union collided when the heads of the railroads, some of them fabulously rich people, cut workers' wages by 10%. That resulted in the railroad strike of 1877. Now violence was used against the strikers. American unions were born in this bloodbath. Chicago was the scene of much of this violence, but in many places the military was called out to protect the employers. Violence escalated on both sides. Train traffic was blocked and property destroyed, mostly by workers who were not union members. In 1894, factory workers for the Pullman Company went on strike after their pay was reduced, but not the rent they had to pay for living in their modest homes. Again, the military was called out. Railroad workers across the country refused to handle Pullman cars, and there was violence again, killing 30 strikers and dividing the railroad unions. 
A huge price in blood and suffering was paid back then and into the 20th century for gains people take for granted today. Eight-hour work days instead of 12, five-day weeks instead of six, protecting children from exploitation, safe working conditions, and compensation for injuries on the job. None of these were given up by corporations until they were won by unions by the sacrifice of their members. It's important that people know about unions, or our workers of today will have to make the same sacrifices all over again. So while trains were moving people and freight, their workers were moving the country toward a better life and worker dignity. We all have a stake in keeping that movement on track. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. As a quick footnote, workers for our major railroads are still union members. We'll roll up our sleeves and work with our language function stemming from the video clip when we return. This ends segment one of episode five. We'll be back with segment two right after this. <laughs> This is a Ramping Up Your English book review. An atlas is a collection of maps. A historic atlas is a collection of maps, photos, and illustrations that tells the reader about what happened in the past and where things happened. For the reader learning about the history of railroads, I recommend National Geographic's Historical Atlas of the United States. Many aspects of American history are beautifully illustrated here organized around themes like immigration and industrialization. Railroad history is included here with simple yet poignant maps illustrating the expansion and then the decline of railroads in the United States through time. Readers can see the expanding effects of the transcontinental railroad and the erasing of many railroads after World War II when automobiles, trucks, and airlines sapped away business from many of the railroads of the time. The atlas also contains regional maps of the United States. If you want to see graphic illustrations of railroad history, get your hands on a copy of National Geographic's Historical Atlas of the United States. You can probably find one at your local library. For Ramping Up Your English, I'm John Letts.